In the heart of the Sinai Peninsula, nestled between the arms of the Red Sea, lies the coastal town of Marsa Berica. It was here, on a seemingly ordinary Tuesday in July of 1996, that an extraordinary encounter would unfold. Martin Christopher Richardson, a 29-year-old American British man, had been enjoying a swim in the famous waters of the Red Sea with some friends on what was intended to be a day filled with fun and adventure. Little did he realize, however, that he was just minutes away from a deadly encounter with one of the ocean's most formidable predators, the Mako Shark. On July 23rd of that fateful year, Richardson, an avid swimmer and adventurer, found himself aboard the Jadran, a 24-meter-long dive boat that had a reputation for being as sturdy as it was reliable. The boat, a proud possession of Danny Herman of Eilat, Israel, was cutting through the glorious waters of the Red Sea, sailing north from Ras Mohammed to the picturesque Sharm el-Sheikh Bay. The day was ripe with promise, the sea calm and inviting, and the sun casting a warm glow on the deck. As the boat made its journey, the crew's eyes were drawn to a pod of five bottlenose dolphins, their sleek bodies gliding playfully through the water. The boat slowed, the engines humming down to a gentle purr. The crew, captivated by the allure of the highly intelligent marine mammals, would stop the boat to allow the guests a chance to swim with the dolphins. It was a rare once-in-a-lifetime sort of opportunity for them to interact with these magnificent creatures in their natural habitat, one that few have had the privilege of experiencing. Martin, Danny, and Harry Hayward, an English dive instructor with a spirit as adventurous as the sea itself, did not hesitate to seize the moment. The trio excitedly slipped into the water and proceeded to enjoy a swim with the dolphins, their laughter and exhilaration echoing over the water. Seemingly welcoming their new human companions with open fins, an orchestra of clicks and whistles would then follow, filling the air in what was a moment of oneness between creatures of land and sea. After a time, Danny and Harry would return to the boat, their hearts full and their spirits invigorated. But Martin, ever the adventurer, was so mesmerized by his newfound friends that he'd choose to stay a decision he'd come to regret. Suddenly, just as soon as they'd appeared, the dolphins would then disappear, leaving a confused Martin alone in the water. It was precisely at this point that he would abruptly spot a mako shark approaching him from within the depths. Isurus oxyrhynchus, commonly known as the shortfin mako, is a fascinating creature in the marine world. Its streamlined body, characterized by a pointed snout, triangular dorsal fin, and a sizable crescent-shaped tail fin enables it to achieve burst swimming speeds of up to 43 miles or 70 kilometers per hour, earning it the title of the fastest shark in the world. The mighty Mako would then proceed to repeatedly chomp at Martin with a terrifying efficiency. It would bite him a total of four times, each instance inflicting severe wounds to various regions of his body. Martin was overwhelmed with fear and a feeling of helplessness as the shark circled him with its menacing presence. He was stuck in the middle of the vast ocean, a fair swim from the safety of the boat, while a relentless predator focused on him, eager to make him its next prey. In a desperate attempt to fend it off, Martin would then punch the shark in the snout upon its next approach, an action often recommended by shark experts as a last resort during a close encounter. The shark would hardly be deterred by this, and despite his efforts continued to circle a horrified Martin. Reality quickly began to sink in for Martin as he put things in perspective realizing that he was not just being circled by a shark in the middle of the ocean, but bleeding from multiple wounds. With his life hanging in the balance, the helpless swimmer then stiffly bobbed along the water's surface, trying to attract as little attention as possible, knowing very well that even the slightest hint of panic movements could easily mimic the vibrations of a wounded animal, a well-known shark attractant. For Martin, each passing second at this point was a battle for survival. Meanwhile, the crew aboard the boat heard Martin scream and would watch in horror as the shark launched him 1 to 1.5 meters in the air. It was at this point that English dive instructor Harry Hayward, despite the risks, without hesitation immediately jumped into a Zodiac, a type of inflatable boat, and sped toward Martin. As he approached, he saw an unexpected sight. Three dolphins were circling him, slapping their flukes and fins on the water's surface. This behavior, often seen in dolphins when they're trying to deter predators, suggested to Hayward that they were attempting to protect Martin. Dolphins are known for their intelligence and complex social behaviors, and there have been numerous accounts of dolphins protecting other animals, and even humans, from threats. A prime example of this was an incident that occurred in 2004, when a group of swimmers off the coast of New Zealand were reportedly protected in a very similar fashion by a pod of dolphins that formed a defense ring around them for over 40 minutes, seemingly warding off a potential attack from a great white. Despite the ongoing threat of the shark, the presence of the dolphins gave a determined Hayward the confidence to reach for Martin, lift him into the Zodiac, and return to the dive boat. Back on the Jardran, the rest of the crew was ready to provide immediate first aid. 
Danny and his father, Itzik, along with Danny's fiance Gail Ashward, work together to control Martin's bleeding. Upon reaching Sharm el Sheikh, a local diving doctor, Dr. Magdi, was quick to respond. He initiated IV fluids and ensured that Martin was transported to an Egyptian army hospital in El Tor for further treatment. Martin was bitten on his back, his shoulder, and his chest. The shark's teeth had punctured Martin's lung, causing a pneumothorax, and the force of the attack was such that it not only caused deep lacerations in multiple sections of his body, but also broke one of his ribs, a grim testament to Omeko's raw power. Doctors would go on to conclude that a single shark was responsible for the grievous injuries, and it was estimated to be between 4 to 5 meters in length, judging by the size of the bite marks on Martin's body. And the role of the dolphins, those unexpected guardians of the sea, has been a point of much discussion and speculation. Some experts suggest that the dolphins, who'd been spotted with a calf by the crew of the Jardran during their swim, had sensed the shark was approaching, causing them to swim away in an attempt to protect it whereas others theorize that they were drawn to the scene by the cloud of blood and inadvertently scared off the shark with their presence by creating a kind of protective barrier around Martin. Martin Richardson went on to survive his horrific ordeal and to this day firmly believes that the dolphins are the reason he's still alive. His story went on to spark wide discussions about marine conservation, the behavior and interactions between sharks and dolphins, and the safety of water activities in areas known for their marine biodiversity. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode about a surfer who was taken away by a great white shark in front of his friends on what was supposed to be a fun day at the beach is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.